Good morning and thanks for joining us. I'm Melissa Kakarika. On this episode of Inside Texoma, we're taking an inside look at Guardians of the Children, an organization here in Texoma that's helping guard and protect children, especially those who might be dealing with abuse and neglect. And this morning I'm joined by Jody Dees, Robert Muir Sr., and Anthony Bess, who are members of the Texoma chapter here. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved with this organization. Um, I started riding quite a few years ago, helping kids, and it just kind of carried over. I myself have never been abused, and I think it's wrong for people to do that to children, their future. And I've got three grandkids, four grandkids of my own. They're little, and I just look at them and think, well, what if somebody was doing that to them? Mm -hmm. And that's made my main drive. Has it been similar for the rest of you as far as being a passion like that? Pretty much, yeah. And tell us a little bit more about the organization and the history. I know it's not just a chapter here in the falls. There are a lot of different chapters. Um, so just tell us kind of how this all got started and your mission, basically. In 2006, the, the, cha the organization was uh, started in San Antonio. That's where our mother chapter is. And now we have 32 chapters in 14 states. And we have more in the works. And now tell us a little bit about how you join, if you want to join. I mean, do you have to be a motorcycle rider? I mean, you know, I know the image is kind of a little bit that you're rough riders, but you're helping children. So talk about who is part of the organization. You have to, you don't have to actually have a motorcycle to join. Um, you can join as a support member, and you don't have to have a motorcycle. But to become a member or a prospective member, you have to either have to have a motorcycle or have access to a motorcycle. And now, Jody, I understand you don't have a motorcycle, right? No, I don't. I have access to a motorcycle. <laughs> I, I proudly ride behind my husband, and I could operate one if I wanted to, but I'd rather be a passenger. <laughs> <laughs> so kind of example of both right here. I want to talk a little bit about your road names, too, because I know you go by kind of different names in the organization. Let's talk about that aspect of it. Well, I got my road name after wrapping Christmas presents one year, and I had glitter all over me. I was wrapping presents for our kids that we have in our chapter and my husband said oh my gosh there's glitter all over you and I was like oh my goodness and he said that's it that's your name what about you guys <laughs> uh, I've been a tattoo artist for 26 years and it just kind of was a natural you know call me tattoo mine I uh, used to well my hair used to be a lot longer than it is now <laughs> and I used to have a full red beard and we went to a radio interview one time and when we got there at the time, I, I didn't really ride with a helmet, and my hair, my, my beard was all windblown, and the guy that was with us at the time said, you look just like the picture of Thor in, the, in the, all the books from mythology. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and it's, ever since then, it's kind of stuck. I've, I've carried it for almost 10 years now. And so everybody kind of gets a nickname within the organization? Yes. Yes. And so now when you guys are out in the community doing work, talk about the issue itself and kind of just what you see when you're helping children, how much of an issue it is here in our community. In our community, it is, it, is very, it is very needed, what we do and what we do for the kids and, and helping them. The Texoma area has um, a lot of abuse and neglect. And when we get out there, when we, when we are told about a child who is in need, then we adopt them into our organization <clears throat> and they become part of our family. And that is, that is what we do. They're a part of our family and, and we go and help them in any way. There was one time we did a kid's ride and we went up to see our kids and I could see them and they were sitting on the porch and they were just, just, you know, just sitting there and they heard the motorcycles coming and you could see them jump up and down and they were so excited. And when we pulled up, they were just, that we had so much fun playing with them and these kids have gone through so much and they are just, they're just really robbed of their childhood. And when we are there with them, and we were coloring on the front porch, and it brings so much back to them that it was at that moment that I told my husband, I want to do this. I imagine it must be just a really good, you know, feel-good moment for you guys to know that you've helped. Is that true? Yes, very yes, much so. Definitely. We've had some kids that uh, will go up and will have the adoption, and they're real skittish. They, uh, they don't want to have any contact with anybody, really. By the end of the adoption, they're hugging on us. We do, uh, every once in a while we'll go around and do a kid's ride. And when we show back up, 
they're grabbing their vests and they're running out and they can't wait for us to, to, to show up and they can hear the bikes coming around the corner. And it's just a, like a complete 180 that these kids are doing. It's obviously a need in our community. Now you mentioned kind of adoptions, you mentioned coloring. I know you do fundraising. I mean, talk about the wide spectrum of things you really do to help kids in our community as part of this organization. We do, we do a lot of fundraising we, um, because all of the money that comes into our chapter, it's very important for everyone to understand, it goes right back to our kids. If our kids need to be taken to a therapy session, if they decide they've had a bad day, the parents can call and we can take them to the Plex, we can take them to play golf, you know, we can go do something fun with them. And all of the money that we raise goes back to help our kids. We just bought school supplies for our kids and we were able to give the project back to school. We were able to give to them to provide some backpacks for local children. So a lot of great work in the community. We definitely want you to stick around because there is a lot more coming up. We're gonna talk about how you can join. We're gonna to talk to a young child who's actually benefited from your work. You can tell us her personal story. We're gonna talk about some events you have coming up. There's just a lot to cover. So you definitely wanna stay with us on Inside Texoma this morning. Welcome back to Inside Texoma. Once again, I'm joined by Jody Dees, Robert Meir Sr., and Anthony Best from Guardians of the Children. You've been hearing us talk about their organization, but how can you join? That's the big question. So tell us a little bit about how people can get involved. Well, the first thing you have to do is uh, you'll uh, fill out a, an application with us that will be forwarded to our founder. Then he'll conduct a, an NCIC, a, a National Crime Info Center, uh, background check on you. Once you pass that, then you are at that point uh, a support member of us. Okay. And any any support member uh, can show up to any of our functions. Uh, they can, uh, you know, do whatever that uh, the regular membership can do. And pretty there, much. There is a difference between being a supporter and a member. Is that true? Um, in some cases, explain the yes. difference kind of to us. Yeah, a support member can do everything other than vote for uh, when we have our not annual elections or bi biannual elections. They, they can't vote on anything dealing with the actual chapter running, but they can do everything else. And they can attend adoptions. They can do pretty much everything else. Okay, and on the topic of adoptions, let's talk about that process and how that works within your organization. And in a, for an adoption, well, we have a child liaison. And actually, in our case, we have two child liaisons in the chapter. And the child lays on myself or tattoo will go to visit the, the, the family. And either it be the, the house, possibly the parents or guardians. And we've got one case that the grandparents have custody of a child. And we check to see exactly what's going on with the child and, you know, and why they would like us to come into their lives. And in some cases, we even got to get down on the floor and play soldiers with them, like I had to do with one child. <laughs> just to get him to come out of the shell because he would not come around us at all. He just shied away completely and hung all over grandma's leg. And after we did that, it was real heartwarming to get up, get up and stretch a little bit. And he got, as soon as I straightened up, he jumped up and hugged me around the neck, which is a very good feeling to know that at least I've made a, a difference to help in his recovery. And after we do that, we decide if the child will fit to what we, what our guidelines are. and usually nine times out of ten, if not ten times out of ten, they always fit. And then we will schedule a date to have what we call our adoption. And we give the kid a child a vest, a teddy bear full of hugs from all the, everybody that shows up. We usually have all of our adoptions. We've had people come from a chapter over in uh, Sherman area. We've had people come up from Lubbock, a chapter there. And we've had people come up from the Metroplex area. And we all are there for the child. And, they, and it's really real fun to watch them as we pull up into the yard or where we decide to have the adoption at and the child just beams from ear to ear and they're kind of skittish at first but by the time we leave they're giving hugs to everybody and really not wanting us to go some in some cases and uh, then after that then we they're part of our family 
we, we just tell them they're part of our family. It's not, no, it's not really a legal adoption like people would think of adoption. It's just we're bringing them into the, our GLC family. Mm -hmm. And we're there for them for whenever, whenever they have, they're having hard times or whenever they go to court, we go to court with them. And we're there for, for them. And does each one of you work with one particular child, or is it kind of multiple members involved with different children? What we do is we have a, uh, uh, ch two child contacts, and each child is appointed uh, their contacts. And they weekly, bi-weekly, they get in contact with the child or the, the guardians of that child, and they basically get uh, updates for us, what the child needs, if... Uh, if there's, you know, how they're doing in school, if they're having any problems, they need uh, uh, a little bit more support than, you know, what they've been getting, we'll, we'll ride out there and let them know we're here for you. We had an instance where a couple of the children that we have adopted into the organization, they were being bullied at school. And the mother reached out and was telling us that her kids were being bullied and we organized a lunch run to go to school and some of the children had found out some of the things that had happened to these kids and that's why they were bullying them and once our guys got up there and girls i think some girls went too once they got up there those kids are not talking anymore about what happened to them they're talking about their big bikers and that's a lot of what it is that some people that some people don't understand is that the biker mentality kind of is a little bit of an, an intimidation factor mm -hmm. and that's okay because we're there to let the people know that you're not going to hurt these kids anymore so it is definitely a part of the image you definitely just have a big presence in their life i mean just expand a little bit more on that and kind of you know he mentioned rolling up on the motorcycles and you know protecting them from bullying i mean that is a big part of this organization yes yes, yes it is it's it you know, if someone is going to try to hurt the child again, if they have their GOC family there, those, those perpetrators are not going to come anywhere near them if they know that they're a part of our family. We don't, we don't really try to do anything to intimidate. Our <laughs> presence is just enough. All right, and again, if you do want to join the organization, you have to go through a background check. What are just some of the requirements for people who want to be a part of this organization? Uh, biggest requirement is no no crimes against children or like family violence or anything like that. That's the biggest thing we look at. Some people have a little bit of a past sometimes, and we take it into consideration when we when we look at them. And if it's nothing serious, then, and they've got a motorcycle, I'm more than happy to have them come ride with us. All right, well, coming up, we're going to hear a more personal story, kind of from the other side, as far as what the organization has done for a young girl here in the community. Stay tuned to Inside Texas.